Okay guys, today we're going to be talking about bushcrafting gear that I can't live without. Now, before we get into the specific gear, I want to kind of preface this with the fact that I can certainly bushcraft without most of this gear. I don't need this gear to bushcraft per se, but how I kind of made this list of bushcraft gear that I can't live without, so to speak, is ultimately gear that if I woke up tomorrow with none of my bushcrafting gear, on me or available or it was all gone, what would be the stuff that I would replace first if money wasn't necessarily an option or if I could still uh, find all of this stuff? Because some of this gear that we're talking about, actually quite a bit of it, is not just expensive, but some of it's just plain hard to find. Things like the backpack that I'm going to mention are no longer made. But ultimately, this is the type of gear that if if push came to shove, stuff that I would replace, stuff that I have replaced, uh, and in some of this gear I actually have sold in the past and replaced. So that's kind of how I formed this list, is it's gear that I really enjoy using and makes bushcrafting not just easier, but more enjoyable to me. So when we're talking about gear that I can't live without, this is the gear that I can't live without. Okay, so first we're going to talk about some of the wearables. Now, admittedly, I tried to keep a lot of clothing out of this list just because uh, clothing is very seasonal or can be very seasonal. It also is less of a necessity less of a necessity because you can find other pieces of you know clothing to wear that can perform similarly. But these are some of the few wearables that I would say that I've either replaced repetitively with the same gear or stuff that just really makes a large difference to me. But this one is definitely something that year around, I'm not always wearing it with every single outing I go on, but this is the Arteryx Beta AR. You guys can kind of tell the uh, logo's a little bit worn off. I wear the hell out of this jacket, whether it's winter, spring, fall. I don't tend to wear it too much in the summer unless I'm going into like tundra areas where there's just a lot of wind and that wind kind of knocks any type of warmth down a notch. But by and large, uh, you know, in just about every season, I find an application or reason to wear this Beta AR. And I think it makes in the summer a phenomenal windbreaker as well as a pretty darn good uh, water jacket or rain jacket, I should say. Water jacket. A pretty good rain jacket to keep water off of you. And in the summer, or sorry, and in the fall, spring, and winter, this paired with a technical hoodie or some mid-layer and a good base layer really keeps you pretty toasty. So that's what I like about the Beta AR. It's an excellent windbreaker and a pretty good uh, rain jacket as well. So this is one type of wearable that I really love. It has good sized pockets, it works very well, and uh, I just have no complaints. And you guys have seen this thing countless times on the channel before. So that is the Arteryx Beta AR. So the next of the wearables, it's gonna be a little bit hard to show because I'm wearing them, but it is the Fiel Raven Vita Pro pants. Now, admittedly, these are a little bit newer to my uh, kind of to my gear list, but the Vita Pros, whether the vented or the non-vented versions of the Vita Pros, they are phenomenal pants. They wear well, they have good sized pockets, and honestly, I can make them work for just about any application or any type of situation that I run into. The Vita Pros are an excellent pair of pants, and I really enjoy using them when it comes down to bushcrafting and being in the wilderness. So the last of these wearables is going to be gloves. And once again, similar to the Beta AR, the Vita Pros, I wear them year round. Now granted, these gloves don't get always worn in the most cold temperatures. I usually switch to something a little more bulky, usually mittens, but by and large in all four seasons, at some point uh, I am wearing Mechanics Originals now. Because it is winter, these are the insulated version, but whether it's the insulated or the non-insulated version, the original Mechanics gloves are very good and they serve as a nice second skin 
where, you know, they're just there to protect you and, uh, you know, allow you to kind of manhandle things that you might get cut up on otherwise. So really solid gloves. They're not perfect and they do wear out fairly fast, but the Mechanics Original Gloves are something that I can't live without. I've replaced so many pairs of Mechanics Originals that it just wouldn't be right to not mention them. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the other more bushcrafty gear. So we're going to start out first with the gear that carries other gear. So this is my Camelback Linchpin. It's a little bit tight, a little bit hard to see, but this is the go-to backpack for me. And it has been for a good many years, and I've honestly tried replacing it. And I do have other setups, like my backpacking setup. I use the Mystery Ranch Crew Cab, but for bushcrafting specifically, this is my go-to pack. This is the, like I said, Camelback Linchpin, and they no longer make this backpack but it just works for me. It's the right size. It fits all the gear that I need it to fit and it carries everything pretty well. Granted, you can see, you know, one, one of these tools I'm going to be talking about here a little bit is sticking out, but it carries it just fine. And overall, there's no complaints. And what I love about the crew cab, or sorry, what I love about the linchpin is that it has a plethora of different ways you can rig it. You can suit, you know, different you can suit so many different loadouts with this particular backpack. You know, you can run axes, saws, bows, firearms, all kinds of things you can rig on this uh, backpack. It is just crazy versatile, and it really doesn't look that versatile per se, but it is very useful, and I have used it in so many outings, in basically every bushcraft outing I've gone on. So, of course, I do have just a few morale patches up front, but aside from that, it's pretty bare bones and pretty stock. But this backpack is one that I absolutely love and have loved for, I think, about six or seven years. This has been my go-to uh, for bushcrafting, and the linchpin is just an amazing backpack. Hard to find, nearly impossible to find nowadays, but the Camelback linchpin is my go-to. Okay, so now let's mention some smaller gear. The first is going to have to be, hands down, my personal survival kit. I'm not going to get into this, I'm not going to talk about, you know, the contents of it, but this is my personal survival kit, and of course, naturally, I would have to replace this if it was lost or for whatever reason, this is a go-to. This is something that I keep on my body. This is something that, you know, is my fail-safe if things go wrong. When I am out practicing bushcrafting, you know, I go out recreationally. And so if a problem occurs, if something happens that is more serious, the PSK is kind of that fail-safe. It's something that I can rely upon to have necessary equipment to make or you know, to make shelters, to make fires, to signal for rescue. That is this kit's job. So that is the PSK and uh, yeah, can't really say too much more about it, but it is definitely a piece of gear that I don't go or that I, it's definitely a piece of bushcrafting gear I can't live without. So let's talk about the next piece here. So the next piece is my Vargo bot, and this is kind of what inspired me to do this video, just because I use this little Vargo bot so much, and I get so much, uh, I've used this Vargo bot over the years so much, and it's one of those pieces of equipment that is my go-to, like whenever I think of, you know, if I'm going out to do any type of bushcrafting or kind of campfire cooking, I always throw this in with me because whether I'm making spruce tip tea with it or I'm making coffee with it, or even if I make a small and light soup or stew with this bot, it is insanely versatile and just insanely useful. Not to mention being the fact that this is a titanium bot, it is very lightweight and uh, yeah, it just has so much versatility for what it brings, like the packaging, uh, for what the size and the package it is. So amazing little cooking, piece of cooking implement, but I really do love this thing. And the Vargo bot is something that if I woke up the next day and I didn't have for bushcrafting, I would certainly buy another one. Okay, so now we're gonna move over to a, the next couple pieces of equipment. So the next one is the Grail Geo Press. Now I was kind of conflicted whether or not I should add this to the list because admittedly, I don't always use it uh, in bushcrafting, but I do find myself taking this little guy out quite a bit. And what I find most, uh, what I 
find most enjoyable and what I like ultimately most about the Grail GeoPress is the fact that it is such an easy, simple, and uh, effective means of water purification and it allows you to have you know a bottle of water at your dispense or at your disposal of clean fresh water and not only that the filter itself works very well at cleaning out all kinds of bad stuff whether it's you know chemicals or bacteria is thing will handle everything so the grail geo press is one of those pieces of kit that i can't live without it is just that good Okay, so now we're going to move over to cutlery. I think the part that maybe you guys are most excited about. And we're going to just jump right into it. So there's a handful of cutlery items, axes, saws, hatchets, and knives that I can't live without. These are the top ones that if, I, if they went missing today, I would replace. And this is specifically for bushcraft, of course. Survival knives are a little bit different. But the first one would be the Mora Bushcraft Black. Now, some people may dislike this knife or say that it's overrated, but for me, I've been using the Bushcraft Black for quite a while, and I love this knife. I usually throw it in my little pocket on these Fial Ravens, and uh, it just works very well. I really have no complaints with it. It's such an easy to use tool, and uh, yeah, it's easy to care for, easy to use, and very effective. Not to mention, it's not terribly expensive either. So the Mora Bushcraft Black is one that I would replace and one that I can't live without. The next one, the next knife, is one that I literally can't live without. This is actually a knife that I had before. I sold it and bought another one because I missed it that much. And so this knife in question is the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter in CPM 3V. This is the original Bushcrafter, not uh, the newer generations. But this little guy here, like I said, is just one of those knives that is very hard to beat. It just does everything in bushcrafting that I want it to do and it does it the way that I want it. And these knives are very sought after and there is good reason for that. The Bushcrafter is simply one of those knives that is very hard to beat. Okay, so taking a look at saws, this one in particular is the Silky Gomboy. Now I will say, when it comes to saws, I'm specifically talking about pocket saws, whether it's something like the Gomboy or the Baco Laplander. I can live without either or, but I love pocket saws. These things have proven themselves time and again, at least to me, to be such a workhorse for how little size or how little room they take up in a pack or in a pocket. Uh, these things are just so useful. And like I said, the amount of work you can get done between this, a knife, and a hatchet is absolutely impressive. So for me, the Silky Gomboy or the Baco Laplander is a piece of gear that I would fastly replace if I didn't have it. Next to that, like I kind of hinted at, is a hatchet. Now for me, it is specifically the GBA or Grand First Brooks Wildlife Hatchet. And the reason why is I do have other hatchets, but none pack as much ability and usefulness into a small size as the GBA Wildlife Hatchet. This small, tiny little guy has like a 13 and a half inch handle, is more useful than most of the hatchets that are 16, 17 inches in handle. And uh, this, for me, makes the list because, like I said, it is so small, so compact, but yet so versatile and so useful. So this is definitely something that, once again, while not cheap, I would definitely replace if I didn't have it because the wildlife hatchet is just that useful. So now to the last bit of cutlery, if you will. Uh, this is the GBA Scandi Forest Axe. It is still very dirty, but um, this is, like I said, the GBA Scandi Forest Axe. And this is something that when I need to step up to a bigger tool, this is the bigger tool for me. Once again, I have other axes and I like those other axes, but this is my go-to. This is what I trust and what I end up using time and time again and have for a good many years. I've had this thing since 2015, I believe, maybe 2014, and uh, it has just proven itself reliable and very usable. So this is my go-to uh, larger kind of axe to step up to. And that wraps up cutlery as far as things that uh, cut up 
pieces of wood or help you craft specifically. Though we still do have a few more uh, pieces or items to talk about. Okay, so that's where the official list ends, but I did want to throw out a couple more runner-ups for the fun of it, and honestly because there is a lot of equipment that I do really enjoy using and stuff that I would honestly replace if I didn't have it. So here are the runner-ups. So the first runner-up is this PNW Bushcraft or Pacific Northwest Bushcraft. Uh, this is a uh, just a canvas, oiled canvas drop cloth. And this thing doesn't seem special or spectacular, but these things are so handy, whether you're looking to, you know, load, load up some firewood and have something to carry that firewood back, or whether you just want to put, you know, something on the ground to keep your, you know, clothes dry while you're sitting or kneeling on the ground to start a fire. Uh, these things just have a million different uses and that's why I included it. They are very useful and being that this is oiled canvas, it's water repellent and it's very durable, very abrasion resistant, fire resistant, all of that stuff. Maybe not super fire resistant, but it's fire enough. It's enough fire resistance to, you know, obviously not be a problem. So this is, like I said, just a canvas, oiled canvas drop cloth and nothing too special or fancy about it, but it is very effective. And the last piece of equipment that I would replace if I didn't have it is a BSA cook kit. And I actually have several of these since I made my review uh, on the BSA or Boy Scout of America mess kit. I've actually gotten several of these, so this is one of mine, but uh, these are absolutely amazing and astounding little cook kits. And this one doesn't necessarily have its canvas cover, but don't necessarily need that. These things, though, uh, are very useful and they are super cheap. Uh, when you look at modern cook kits to go camping with, you know, you're talking 50, 60, even up to $100. I mean, things like the Vargo Bot are definitely not cheap whereas this little mess kit is very cheap and these things can come in oftentimes under $20 and I've even gotten them under $10 and so um, these little kits are super great and they allow you a lot of versatility they give you a frying pan a plate uh, a pot that you can use to uh, you know cook small stews, small soups in, and stuff like that. And it's just super useful. These guys are very hard to beat. And like I said, for the price, very very hard to beat these. And overall, can't really complain with either of the kits that I have. They are useful, and. Yeah, they are really great additions to have. So the BSA Cook Kit is a runner-up for me, and so is the Drop Cloth, but they are very useful pieces of kit. So I would highly encourage checking those pieces of kit out, and hopefully you guys have enjoyed taking a look at some of the bushcrafting equipment that I can't live without, some of the stuff that I would definitely replace. As always, God bless, and I'm out.